This week, we've got a ton of new 3D printing materials, as well as a couple acquisitions, investments, and of course, desktop metal going public right here on Vision Miner 3D Printing News. Let's get into it. Starting off, we've got BASF releasing a new metal filament, Ultrafuse 17.4 pH. This, as the name suggests, is a 17.4 stainless steel. Now, the great thing about their filament is that you can run it in almost any machine. Uh, your $200 Ender 3 can do it. Uh, but keep in mind, you do have to debind and sinter it afterwards, which does come at a cost with the foundry, and uh, that's after the not so cheap roll of filament itself. But the ability to print metal without spending 20 plus K on a machine is definitely worth considering. Now, if you're making jigs or fixtures or tooling, which you've previously been CNC milling, you could almost definitely save a bunch of cash by 3D printing them instead. Whether you're using polymers or metal, that definitely applies. Now, there are other options for metal on FDM systems like Virtual Foundry, which we did use a lot of back in the day, as you can see from this copper engine block and a couple of these other parts that we were testing out to see if we could do them lighter or do them hollow and then sinter them and make other parts. Uh, you know, a bunch of engine components, so it's definitely a cool thing. That filament did tend to be a lot more brittle and wasn't very usable, but I'm sure they've made a lot of progress in the last few years. So if you don't want to spend $800 on a roll, that might be an option as well. Now, on top of the new stainless steel, if you do want to spend $100,000 on a machine to print metal and FDM technology, both Mark Forged and Desktop Metal now have the ability to print copper. Now, copper is great for a couple reasons. Firstly, most of all, thermal conductivity. You can make super complex, totally custom heat sinks and heat exchangers uh, in your shop in pure copper. Uh, next, it is also antimicrobial, which is all the rage these days. Uh, and they've got some cool examples on display, from a helical heat exchanger to a bus bar for high current power distribution, along with a couple cool heat sinks. Now, SmartTech analysis is projecting that over 1.4 million kilograms of copper powder, both pure and copper alloys, will be shipped specifically for 3D printing by 2029. So this is very, very big. Anyway, moving right along into polymers, we've got four new nylon SLS materials from BASF. BASF is a huge player in the industry, along with their subsidiary Sculptio, and they launched four new nylon 11 powders created from renewable castor oil. They've got PA11MJF, Ultrasynth PA11CF, Ultrasynth PA11ESD, and Ultrasynth PA11, developed for selective laser sintering and HP's multi-jet fusion technology. And this presents a lot of new opportunities to print high ductility and impact strength parts. The Ultrasynth PA11 carbon fiber is one of the strongest materials currently available for SLS 3D printing, according to BASF, and the Ultrasynth PA11 ESD features the electrostatic discharge properties. Uh, currently, these specialized engineering materials are only available through Sculptio. Next, Markforge has also released another nylon, specifically an ESD-safe version of their Onyx material, which is their carbon fiber nylon. Uh, and this new electrostatic discharge safe spin on Onyx aims to fill a very specific niche, specifically the production of ESD safe electronic components. Now, without the ESD safety, many electronics are susceptible to damage in the presence of electrical charge, rendering the products useless or broken or shorted. Uh, essentially, it means that the part will take a static shock and conduct it instead of the electronic parts inside taking the brunt and potentially burning up. Columbia Electronic has already worked with the material 3D printing complex testing fixtures. Now, we've got a few ESD safe filaments in our shop, and they definitely have their advantages, especially if you're in something like semiconductor manufacturing or putting together products. Uh, we love seeing all these new materials coming out, and I've dubbed the last year and a half the materials revolution, following the previous years in the past of the machines revolution, where we saw a plethora of new machines almost every week. It's really great to see. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, let us know by hitting that like and subscribe button. It helps us in the YouTube algorithm, and we really do appreciate it. Moving right along, we've got AMUG finally coming back as a live event. Yeah, that's right, AMUG's back. This year it's gonna be in Orlando, Florida. A new location for the 30 year old event that used to go between Chicago and St. Louis, but believe me, it's gonna be awesome. Especially Florida, this is gonna be really cool. 
uh, scheduled for May of next year, 2021. They just announced it. And frankly, for all of you watching, this is the best event of the year. You will not want to miss it if you're interested in seeing the latest and greatest of 3D printing. And this is not a sponsored post. More than 70 sponsors and 100 exhibitors have already applied their 2020 conference commitments to the 2021 event. So you can bet it's still going to be packed. Now, the biggest difference with AMUG, in my personal opinion, is that it's really, it's not just a sales expo. It's a full-on week-long event of in-depth lectures, incredible networking events. And when I say that, I mean it. Uh, like last year, they rented out the entire Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago and provided free drinks and free food and let everybody run wild for an entire night. Now, uh, the expo hall is only there for the first few days of the event, but it's still enough to see just about everything. And then the rest of the time, you're literally running around with a bunch of crazy engineers who are interested in all these types of 3D printing and the stuff that you learn. I mean, you really can't find anything else like it. It's amazing. You'll definitely see me there next year. Uh, can't wait to go to Florida. Next, we've got some economic news. In 2021 alone, dental 3D printing is expected to reach $3.1 billion in revenue. That's right, $3.1 billion. Now, if you've been to the dentist in the last few years, you've probably seen the orange-lidded 3D printers. They're everywhere now. In a press release uh, from SmartTech, they pointed out that dental 3D printing was once one of the most stable and fast-growing opportunities. Now, of course, that trend was a little bit hindered by the whole COVID economic crisis, uh, as was the entire global manufacturing economy. Uh, now, this is mainly due uh, to being negatively impacted due to acute government restrictions discouraging or outright prohibiting non-emergency dental care, according to Smart Tech. Regardless, they believe that the dental additive industry is poised for a huge rebound, explaining that a quick bounce back recovery is already underway, which is great to hear. Now, regardless of everything going on in the world, we've got Stratasys, and they know something good when they see it. In fact, they just bought the company Origin, who makes high-end SLA machines for performance materials. Now, the Origin co-founder, Chris Prucha, said, this is a major strategic shift for Stratasys, and will shake up the industry, maintaining that by focusing on more open materials, Stratasys will make more production possible. Now, back in 2018, they developed a new type of digital light processing, or DLP 3D printer, that doesn't rely on an oxygen-dependent interface, unlike other continuous DLP technologies, aka carbon. Now, this opens the technology up to a much wider array of materials, along with an open materials approach and it's set Origin apart from other companies in the space. Now, Stratasys is often known for having closed material systems where the materials cost significantly more than the open market and you pay hefty fees for new material licenses. But following suit with Stratasys' own MakerBot, it looks like they're getting more into the open material market, which is great to see and should serve them well in the future. At Vision Miner, all our machines that we sell are open material systems, specifically for high temp, high performance materials like Peak and Ultim, used in aerospace, medical, oil and gas, automotive, you name it. Uh, we love seeing this from Stratasys, it's really following suit with the rest of the industry. If you want to do more, check out our shop at visionminer.com. And if you love this video or love open material systems, definitely hit that like and subscribe button. And moving right along, more investor news. We've got, finally, desktop metal going public. That's right, you too can now invest in this 3D printing giant perhaps one of the best marketed and heavily invested companies of all time, they're literally changing the game. They're focused on production, and you can go along for the ride on the New York Stock Exchange now. Uh, they are expected to reach a value of $5 billion in the next five to 10 years, so it's a probably a pretty good bet. Moving right along into the news blitz, we've got the cultured meat revolution. Singapore and Israel one step closer to commercializing lab-grown chicken. I don't know if I want that. I probably don't. But anyway, we've got Branch Technology raising $11 million to grow the largest fleet of construction 3D printers. We've got Blue Origin with their 3D printed lunar lander engine, which could take the first woman to the moon. We've got NASA completing 23 hot fire tests on critical 3D printed engine components. And of course, Formula One releases a new range of 3D printed perfumes. 
Yeah. Okay, anyway, uh, Japanese additive manufacturing is rising, and there's a link on that below. And yet another report on the 3D printing trends of 2020 from our friends over at 3D Natives. Be sure to go check those out, and from Vision Miner to you, we wish you a happy holiday season. So the question for this week is, what 3D printer or accessory do you want for Christmas? Go leave a comment below and let us know what you think, uh, what you thought of the video, new stories that we missed, or of course, another funny comment. Here at Vision Miner, we specialize in functional 3D printing, especially in high performance, high temperature plastics like Peak, Ultim, PPSU, and more. If you know you need functional 3D printing in your business, but haven't been able to pick a system yet, just reach out. We're happy to help you make the right decision for your specific application, even if we don't carry it ourselves. Give us a call or shoot us an email, and we're here to help. Next week, the Christmas special. Stay tuned, y'all, and thanks for watching. Have a positive rest of your day, and I'll see you on the next video.